Hello, welcome to Secure Talk, your trusted source of information on the latest threats, trends, tools, and technology related to cybersecurity. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Secure Talk. Secure Talk is brought to you by Adequest, your cybersecurity and compliance partner. My name is Mark Schreiner, and I'll be your host for this episode of Secure Talk. Today, we're going to be talking to the CEO of Metric Stream, Mr. Bruce Dahlgren. Um, and Metric Stream is a company that, quote unquote, thrives on risk. So this is, should be a very interesting conversation. Bruce, how are you today? Great, great. It's nice to be with you, Mark. Thanks. Likewise. I, I really like your artwork there. What, what, what am I looking at? Yeah, so it's a painting. Um, <laughs> we lived in Singapore for five years, and okay. um, which was a wonderful experience. That's the not thing, Singapore, though. No. <laughs> okay. It's the beginning of the story, though, Mark. So the uh, the painting is actually Rottnest Island, which is a really cool island off the west coast of Australia, off the coast of Perth. Wow. And uh, my wife and I would do brunch, and we would go into this beautiful art museum, uh, which was right there in Singapore by our place. By our place, and I kept commenting about this beautiful painting. So uh, one birthday, it showed up in our our place there in Singapore as a gift from my wife. But what makes the painting really special is that's where the British, when they were settling the west coast of Australia, they kept running into this island <laughs> and made a mess out of their boats. It, there must be a supply chain uh, story here somewhere. But, uh, but the bottom line is they had to build a lighthouse, and it's a famous painting of the lighthouse there. So I'm, I'm a lucky recipient. I don't think my wife really likes it, though, because she makes me put it in my office. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. But it's a great story. And uh, I'm just curious. I, I lived in Singapore as well. I was there for four years, I think. Uh, yeah, 2008 to 2012. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It was actually, <laughs> we got out of the U.S. just when the financial crisis hit. And the industry I was in was doing extremely well in Asia. So it was kind of one of those, it's better to be lucky than good kind of moments. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so so uh, I really enjoyed Singapore. Worked throughout the region, off and on for like 20 years. But based in Singapore that time for four years. Um, what, what were your thoughts? Yes, well, we actually overlapped a little bit. I might have seen you at one of the coffee places or something there. Or an Amcham event or something. Or Yeah, from 2012 to 2017. I was the managing okay. director for, for Hewlett Packard. I was running the region for HP. So in HP... Um, HP Enterprise Services or? Yeah, so, so that was when in 2012, it was all one big company. Right, right. And then um, we separated the company in that kind of 2015 to 2017 time, time frame. We broke HP into four different companies. HP, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Microfocus, and then a company called DXC. And uh, it was quite a process. Well, wow. well, I'll have to maybe offline have a follow-up conversation. My brother was with uh, HP Enterprise Services. I, I get the names mixed up, but he ended up yeah. with the micro micro focus, and wow. now we're over at IBM in a, in a global role. But he was based in APAC at that time, so, oh, so uh, we might have crossed you, paths. You might have crossed paths, right? So now, where are you based? Yes, so we moved. Uh, we came back from Singapore in 2017, repatriated mm -hmm. into Austin, Texas, okay. and did uh, software company work there. And uh, that ended a great outcome. And then uh, I'm in the Bay Area now with Metric Stream. My wife and I have been here since July of last year, almost a year. That's uh, yeah, We're interesting. In and, and, and how are things down there now with, uh, with the, the, the pandemic and things? Are it starting to open up? It's getting better. Um, we live yeah. right here in Palo Alto, which is a wonderful place, you know, so right, sure. the whole thing. Um, yeah. I have to say, compared to Texas and Florida, it was a little slower in opening up. Um, but now it's it's really starting to open up. Most everyone has been vaccinated, certainly in this area. And right. so you can go in restaurants now and, and that type of thing. So it's it's coming back. That's that's good to hear. Well, I'm, I'm just up the coast from you in the uh, Seattle Bellevue area. In fact, I'm maybe 15 minutes from well, yeah, from Microsoft uh, main campus there. I know. Uh, and and I'm sure you've been up here. And today is one of those beautiful, glorious spring days where not a cloud in the sky. And it's, it's really <laughs> nice. Because you don't want to come up here in December, unless you're into skiing. You know, it's, like, it's good. So, uh, Bruce. Well, I, oh, go ahead. No, we used to take, uh, we used to fly up, of course, obviously, when I was with HP and, and visit Microsoft. And it always, it always seemed like it was raining to me. But uh, it pretty much it always is. But 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 when it's nice, it is, it is really nice. Um, so I got to ask you, uh, you know, when we were setting this up, uh, one of the talking points was the suggested that, that um, about leveraging risk 
as a vehicle for strategic business growth. And I, I mean, that, to me, that was kind of a, a very interesting um, way to put it because, you know, most companies are very risk averse and it's all about uh, avoiding risk. How do you, um, how, do, how do you do that? What's, yeah. that? what's that about? Yeah, you know, it's interesting if you think of how the software industry has evolved over the last several decades, and I've had a chance to see that. One of the things that our new tagline, which you mentioned in the beginning, Thrive on Risk, Right. So our belief is, is that you're, you're not going to be able to eradicate, uh, eliminate risk. Let's just right. be candid, right? So it's here. So instead of fearing this or instead of trying to avoid it, let's be smart. Let's turn it into a strategic advantage. And a lot like the way the software industry grew up, if you think back to ERP systems and then CRM, now with GRC, these companies have a lot of the data, have a lot of the knowledge information, but it's embedded in their different systems. Are there ways for us to bring that out and start reporting, analyzing, and even predicting where there are going to be risk elements and then turn it into an advantage? Start thinking about, now let's be honest, there are certain situations like the one that just happened with Colonial, for example, where right. you're going to have to mitigate and you're going to have to, to resolve this. But if you had the connection of all of these data elements and if you were able to really have that information, you'd be much more effective at doing it and hopefully even uh, uh, maybe be able to predict some of these things could happen. And uh, I'm assuming that's something that that um, that metric stream helps companies do. For sure. Could you give me um, some some specific examples of, of th th exactly those types of scenarios, m maybe re related to uh, either risk management, IT security, audit and finance controls, any, any one of those areas? Sure. Well, clearly right now, post-pandemic scenario, more and more government regulations, the economy coming back. This is this GRC, this whole aspect of risk management is really hot now today in the industry, not sure. just because there are regulatory requirements and compliance and audit aspects, but also because we've got new supply chains. We've got new relationships that are happening. Global economies are coming back in different ways. Sure. And then you add all of the digital aspects on top of this. Work from home. Companies are now dealing in different kinds of frontline employees. And how do you how do you do this? So our, our for Metric Stream, since you asked, our real uh, capability is built around a platform, a common platform that then we build these products, whether they're risk or audit oriented compliance that literally take uh, the, the data, both uh, organic within the company and third party, and are able to bring it together so that the, the customer can start to analyze this and start to look at it holistically. It's completely okay. integrated. Okay, so um, at your customer, who's typically the person or the team that's gonna be, is this compliance officers or this CISOs or who are the people that are gonna be using this tool? Yes, correct. Actually, it's a really good point. And I do want to go back, Mark, and give you some examples because sure, when sure. we're talking about data elements and artificial intelligence, we all throw around those buzzwords, <laughs> but it helps yeah. when you actually have an example, you know. Sure. But I would tell you that the CISO is the primary uh, point um, when you look at, at the different risk aspects of the organization, but it, it differs by vertical industry, it differs by company, but it's become very complex. That CISO role is, is very challenging, right? It used to kind of be you'd have these standard reports and red, yellow, green, and you know, you'd be right. assessing these things, maybe an update on the board <laughs> meeting once in a while. But today that job has become very complex, not just the fact that you've got to deal with so many new aspects to the digital um, environment, but on top of that, you've got to deal with the audit side, the risk side, compliance, you've got different user groups that you have to be able to come together. And then don't forget the CIO, the information officer, sure. who is concerned to make sure that there are standards in the company and all of these things work and are safe. So the CISO is a, is a very challenging uh, role where we're finding, I think, I think where we help CISOs the most is the fact that there's one integrated risk platform. So it's all coming together and simply said, they're all speaking about the same data, the same analysis. And you can imagine the complexity when every different department or user has their own form of, of reporting or information. And by pulling it all together into this integrated risk management platform, it gives them one version of the truth. Okay, so I'm the CISO. I open up the platform. What do, what do I see? 
and <laughs> I, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming, you know, depending on my organization, I'm going to see different things. I have different options, but just kind of walk me through what, what, this, what this looks like. Yeah, sure. So this user experience, this user interface is absolutely critical. And this is another advantage that MetricStream brings because not only is there a standard interface, right? Uh, uh, think of it as uh, like a user experience, right? So it would come up with the different things that they want to look at on a regular basis. But on top of that, we provide the opportunity to be able to, to add to that, to configure it in ways that mean something to that business. Because let's be honest, how a bank analyzes and uses risk is very different than a telco. Right. And we want to make sure that the way that that experience looks is related to what they want to see and what's important to them. And we have the domain experts that come in and work with our customers to do that. It's uh, it's it's really very exciting. Cool. I, I, you know, one, one thing you mentioned, Mark, that I was going to bring up as, as an example of where this is headed I mentioned red, yellow, and green, right? And I've been around a long time, both you and me, and, and we got similar experiences. You know, you used to kind of see things and if it showed up red, then you went and looked at it. Sure. But in today's world, we're actually quantifying risk. We're actually taking risk and instead of having it just be red, yellow, green, we actually wanna start putting some numerical value. Now you can imagine that on a regular basis, whether it's a board meeting or a C-level discussion, we're able to start putting numerical value quantification into what is important with these risk thresholds and different vertical industries have different thresholds for that risk. Does your tool or platform allow you to compare like, hey, here's the industry standard or? Absolutely. So Absolutely. Give me and, an example of that. Uh, yeah. yeah, correct. So obviously those would be some alerts that mm -hmm. would show up, you know, this, this is, uh, it's exceeding this level. But they also might have certain areas that they want to look at within their third party. So, you know, you know let me give you an example. When, sure. when a company goes in and sets up a supply chain, um, the solar winds example is a classic, right? So what happens is you have a third party that's coming in to provide something. Um, in this case, I, I believe it was a scanning tool, security scanning tool. Typically, companies will only evaluate the security uh, or the risk aspects when they sign up. They don't continue to evaluate that third party. So it's very unfortunate, but a lot of the hackers or ransomware, this example with Colonial, they'll come through these third parties. Right. And they'll be able to find seams into the cybersecurity aspects and show up in ways that, honestly, they weren't analyzing. So what we want to do is we want to not just look at the things within the company. We want to go into third party providers as well. How do you do that though? I mean, like I, I could have literally thousands, thousands of vendor, <laughs> vendors, right? So, so how are you going to, what kind of, what kind of things are you going to look at and how do you do it? Yeah, this is a great question. You know, a lot of it goes back to when you sign up those partners, when you okay. bring those suppliers in that we want to make sure we have access to their records. We want to have access to their uh, data so that this becomes a seamless integrated risk management tool. And, and you're actually talking about an advantage that MetricStream brings. The fact that we can go into these third parties, pull these data elements together. So for that analysis, we're looking broader than just that enterprise right. and uh, pull it together, yeah. Do you look at like things like the, your, your vendor's DNS health or uh, patching policies, or is, there, or is this simply, do, have they filled out the um, their, their the security questionnaire and do we have it on file or is it all of the above? All of the above, wow. all of the above. So you clearly have the compliance aspects that are required and those, right. those regulations are increasing, right? So you've got to know that because, but think of it as a weakest link, you know, candidly, you could have everything buttoned up, but a third party uh, provider not have some compliance and it makes you not compliant. So there's clearly all of those aspects but then also the information about what's happening, whether it's uh, a manufacturing process, a bank could be a, a, a provider of some uh, retail banking application. You want to make sure that all of those things, all that data is all connected. Excellent. You, you brought up compliance there. Um, what are you seeing in terms of which compliance uh, bodies are becoming the most uh, top of mind for your customers? You know, what, what are the biggest ones? For example, HIPAA or is it something else or, you know? Yeah, it, it varies by vertical industry. And mm -hmm. we obviously have domain experts for the different verticals so they can describe whether it's HIPAA, that type of thing. But I do find it interesting, you know, Joe Biden and, and the administration just put out an executive order. 
And now they're going to start putting in government regulations on cybersecurity. Right. This is a great example of where a company like Metric Stream, who has that information, understands what those requirements are, can make sure that it's built into our integrated risk platform. So uh, I think that's the next new one. I, I, okay. this, this, this energy situation in the southeastern U.S. Uh, with Colonial, I think it just really sent shockwaves. It, yeah. it felt like ahead, a, a few decades ago of, of, of gas lines, if you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's uh it, it, and you know it's funny because like if you look at europe and you've got gdpr and gdpr has secure people think it's data protection but at, with data protection there are security guidelines and requirements that companies are, are supposed to maintain um, in the u.s obviously we've got a, a patchwork of industry and state some federal limited amount and, and people, you know, we've heard it for years that maybe we need some type of kind of unified standard. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts? Well, this has been around from the days when first data warehouse started coming out and data analytics, and now it's, it's grown into artificial intelligence and IOT and all this, but privacy has always been an issue, right? And different areas of the world look at these differently. You, you brought up GDPR, the European, uh, union clearly has requirements around privacy. We're actually working with a group out of Sweden to make sure that we have knowledge of how all this stuff works, because those become issues. Um, there are barriers into markets now for companies that are not um, compliant with some of these regulations around privacy. And then I, I don't even need to tell you about China, but, uh, <laughs> you know, between cameras and everything else, and you've got a lot of experience in Asia, as I do. Um, every every region is a little different, you know, and, and uh, these things, it's a it's a big issue. For well, sure. so so I mean, uh, uh, metric stream, you are a global company, you have offices all around the world, right? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. In fact, it's a it's a really a nice uh, mix. When you look at our customer base, mm -hmm. uh, we've got a solid presence, obviously, in the Americas, Europe, but a really growing base now in Asia. So pretty exciting. And do you find that the, the 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 demand, the awareness, the interest levels vary by region? I think so. Um, you know, we're working with an energy company in Asia, for example. There are very specific issues that they have with the government there and the things that they have to address. But let's also realize that they provide their their resources, they provide their their products around the world. So it's not just a regional compliance aspect. It's also understanding how to supply in areas around the world. Well, that's it. so. So if if you were going to come in and help an organization, and they say, hey, you know what, we, because we're operating all around the world, we have to be in compliance with various national uh, requirements, et cetera. And you can, you know, you're not going to just help them in the U.S. You can help them wherever they're doing their business. Yeah, th let me give you an example. Uh, there's a very large global telco that right. is a customer of ours, and when we went in and started working with them, basically they had more than a hundred different sources of what they would consider to be risk analysis, right? Okay. You can imagine, very complex global company. And by bringing in this integrated risk manage, uh, management platform, we were able to create li literally a single risk score. So instead of having this global company have 100 different of these data sources and trying to aggregate them and what do they mean, we're able to come in and create a platform and a standard and then we have one risk score that they can look at in all of these different groups. Can and you give some example, examples of, I mean, I, I, that's a great example of, uh, of how you're helping the company, but give some examples of uh, sources of risk analysis or, you know, where, where are these data streams coming from? Yeah, so in this case, I mean, they could obviously come from their customer databases, right? So okay. they're trying to understand the, I'll call it, um, you know, systems of record in the way that they produce transactions or bill customers. So you've got all of these actual uh, elements, but then you've got all of these unstructured data sources as well that are now coming in that they wanna be able to manage and be able to, to pull together. Um, an insurance company using videos. Um, wow. You could think of a whole different host now of data sources that you wanna be able to pull together and, and be able to analyze. Okay. Um, much earlier in the conversation, we talked about, or you, you mentioned the, you know, the explosion in work from home. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, and, and, and obviously that poses a risk on, on, in a variety of ways. How, how do you or how does your organization help solve that problem? Yeah, I would say there's there's a couple different things. So obviously, anytime you have this proliferation of of, of technology, and mm-hmm. you've got different regions and people trying to work from home, so you've got a lot of security aspects. So our security operating center will be able to track if there are risks of of hacking or other things like that. But even more than that is the frontline workers. Right. And what we've added to our platform now is some mobility solutions. Because a lot of the risk awareness happens on the front line, whether it's a shipper and a dock or a teller and a bank. And then you can imagine the complexity if they're working virtual. Sure. And these mobility solutions will give them a chance to be, be able to alert the company that they've seen something or witnessed something or something came to them. Right. I mean, it could be a sure. email or that type of thing. I, I would tell you, Mark. Um, uh, I can't give you the details on this, but you might find the story interesting. I, sure. I had a, a, a really good f- a friend of mine in the IT industry uh, who happens to ma- manage this for a company. And he came to me and he said, uh, I just got the most alarming notice. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, I got an email from a hacker that has been inside our email system for nine months. And the reason he was reaching out is he wanted to let me know that they got everything they needed and he was leaving. Uh, (laughs) And just put this in context of, Mm -hmm. you know, then your mind starts to think, well, where where have they been? How did this happen? And obviously it went in through some form of seam uh, in the process. Now you've got to alert the board. You've got a whole series of requirements that you have to start going through. And, um, you know, I think a lot of these security issues are not an if, it's a when. So do you have a plan? Do you have the information to be able to hopefully identify it and if not mitigate it as you go through? And do you help with, with the mitigation? I mean, do you, uh, so we like do. here's, here's the, in terms of what, creating a plan or, and then uh, can you, with your tool, can you assign different, uh, you know, uh, responsibilities and roles and, and then, and then follow up to see whether that's been completed, et cetera. We can, and keep in mind now we're a software company. So our our job is to make it available, but but also there is some predictability aspects. So you want to alert things and some algorithms to help with that. But what we do is we partner up with systems integrators and consulting firms, the best in the world. And then they are able to take that information and advise customers on a, on a more of a service orientation or consulting. So okay. we, we don't aspire to be a consulting company, but sure. there is an element of what we do there, sure. Okay. Um, and then I'm just curious, like, you, you know, you're down in, the, in Silicon Valley, uh, the land of startups. <laughs> and startups are kind of uh, notorious for really being focused on the product versus taking care of security. But, you know, if you're developing a, you know, a new product, you, you want to protect that. Right. Absolutely. And, and I, and I'm curious from where you uh, sit and it, what do you see? I mean, are, are you able to go out with, with startups and give them just enough? Cause again, t- typically the money is all focused on, let's get that minimum viable product out there. Let's get some, you know, get some use cases going, get the customers uh, on board. And, oh yeah, we, we know we have to have this minimum level of compliance, but it's kind of pushed off to the side. What are you, what are you seeing? Yeah, it's it's a great point. In fact, um, I've just added a whole department and a, an officer to do InfoSec. Right. Because we want to make sure that obviously we're providing security tools to help them, but we want to make sure that our cloud environment is is secure as well. And this is into that 99.99 type of environment. And it's just it's just an ongoing thing. So I literally get a monthly review of the details, whether it's the data center, the cloud data centers or the applications and where we stand and where we see vulnerabilities. Uh, to a degree, um, however you want to say it, we use our we use our own secret sauce for ourselves, if that makes sense. That's, and it's that's... really important because I think that we should be our best own reference, right? And yeah, if I definitely. go to a customer and say our environment is secure, you should trust us because we use our tools, then you should too. Well, and then, and then but how about the the kind of the startup community in, in in Silicon Valley down there? Do you do you find that um, that there's a greater awareness or concern about? I think so. these days. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'm not so sure that I'm the best expert to tell you that, but I, I would say that you can't be in this environment now without right. rec- 
recognizing this whole ransomware hack thing. Um, I mean, it's, it really is getting out of control. In fact, um, I'll tell you another story. I, I had a, a customer also tell me this, a little bit like the colonial situation mm -hmm. where ransomware went into their environment. Obviously, they, they paid uh, through Bitcoin. And this is how, this is how um, aggressive these hackers are getting. After it was done, they received payment. They went back to the to the individual, back to the company, and said, "For a couple hundred thousand more, we'll consult you on how not to let this happen again." Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not saying that's Silicon Valley because I don't know where it came from, so right. don't read into this. But you know, I'm not so sure that this isn't like the radar detector. You know, right? This company that invented the radar for the police invented the radar detector and uh, <laughs> i'm not so sure that there isn't a little bit of incestuous uh, behavior there that's uh, that's pretty cheeky man that's like <laughs> 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 I, 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 and just the fact that they asked probably tells you that they've that they've actually done that successfully be before right you know we ask enough uh, enough of the people that we've hacked a percentage will say yes please come and help us you know that's just uh yeah. Craziness. You know, in a strange sort of way, I guess it's like a lot of things in life. You know, when you have these bad situations or these things happen, I, I think it, it ultimately makes us better. I think it makes mm -hmm. the technology more secure. There's a lot of ac uh, aspects to that. Um, it's just uh, I, I always find it disappointing that people use creativity for negative things, but uh, it's just the reality. It Yes, I agree with you on that. Um, and it's it, it, I think we can no longer put our heads in the sand and say, hey, it's not going to happen because, like you said, it's not if, it's when. And yeah. I think it, you know, let's break it down. Just, you know, come off of um, your, your platform for a second and, and just talk in general. What advice would you give um, CISOs? Because you said you deal with a lot of CISOs. What, what, you know? I mean, it's. I wouldn't want that job. You know, that's gonna be. You, how do you, how do you, how do you go to sleep at night? Because there's, yeah. there's so many different potential vectors of problems, right? So, sure. what general advice would you give somebody aside from just don't be a CISO? But I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's exciting. In fact, I, I was just uh, on the phone last week with an individual who just took a new CISO role for a new energy company and. And it's exciting. I mean, any yeah. way you look at it, you the CISO role. I mean, let's let's be honest. This went from kind of like, oh my gosh, we have to put this on the agenda to right. you know, I need to see you every week type of thing. Right. And and so I, I think it's changed um, uh, the the requirements of the job is what I would say. I think uh, the job is not just a technology role anymore. It's not just a, I under, need to understand the, the compliance or the regulatory requirements, et cetera. I need to be really a part of the business. And if I'm putting in some risk quantification or if I'm connecting in with audit or other areas of the business, I really need to have a much bigger view of what's happening in the business. And you're starting to see those CISO roles starting to show up on executive committees and, and all those. So I, I think I think the skill set now for that job, and it's a very tough job, is much broader. Um, it's interesting. We're, we actually have a summit coming up in June that we do specifically focused uh, on this role, a GRC summit. Yeah. And um, and the purpose is is to allow CISOs to come in and network together, mm -hmm. and not just CISOs, chief risk officers as well, but sure. an opportunity for them to network and talk about these because. You know, if they can learn from another example or share or network, it helps them uh, be able to navigate through their challenge. But I would say the biggest thing for me is it's not just a one place in the company, do your thing, show up with your dashboard. It's really a part of the business now and addressing and value, putting value on these risk aspects. Thank you for that. That's excellent. Um, you mentioned your, your summit. Is this going to be a virtual or... Yes, we. Yeah. We're, this is still virtual, um, okay. and uh, it, uh, we're really, really excited about it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, just coming out for all of this, but it's extremely well attended. The company has done this for many years. Um, I, I actually, I think, close to two decades, believe it or wow. not. And it's changed. And what, what we actually work on is how the role of these CISOs, for example, is changing, and and the importance now, and how you could use the tools. So, you know, you have to think of it this way. It's it's great if the software is able to provide algorithms and 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 be able to start playing out the dashboard and showing this stuff. But a CISO has got to be able to interpret that and communicate it. 
they have to have trust within the uh, organization and be able to bring knowledge. And then they have to, in turn, trust that the data they have is accurate. And um, and that's what that's what we do. And, and, and work with business to figure out what's an acceptable level of risk. Because like you said, you can't get rid of all risk, right? I mean, it's impossible. Right. You're always going to have some risk. So what's the acceptable amount here? Um, for this specific, and you know, whether we're talking about quality, we're talking about compliance, et cetera. Um, do you do you help with that, with quantifying the? Yeah. How do you how does that work? Yeah. So basically, we work with the customer and be mm -hmm. able to understand where their thresholds are, what types of things are important to them, and then obviously we bring our recommendations through our our tools as well. And uh, we sit down and we start creating this uh, quantification process to say, how can we actually start creating this one version of the truth that you can be able to look at this and then communicate it? So uh, it varies by vertical industry. Um, but uh, yeah, I think this is the next big space. Yeah. Um, it, and you, you read the same things, Mark, that I do, right? So GRC was, was very much um, the risk aspect, I would say more around the profits of the business when you think about it that way, the financials right. of the business. The other major trend that's happening in the industry is this ESG, and we see it more and more, the environmental and social aspects. Mm -hmm. And you could see these things so that corporations not just being rated um, and, and ranked on profits and financial results, but on purpose and social aspects as well. And so our prediction is, is that out in the industry, we'll start quantifying those. No different than we look at PE ratios and, <laughs> and, and, and EBITDA. And it's going to start to say, how does this company get ranked from social or environmental carbon footprint, things like that. Yeah, and you, you, you know, you bring up a really interesting topic, and it, you know, Secure Talk is primarily about cybersecurity and data protection, but we're, it's also in terms of you know risk management and so on. Um, but when you talk about ESG, there, you know, there's there's a there is a a movement. Um, certain organizations are pushing for the divestiture in fossil fuel companies. Um, part of that's for the environmental uh, aspect. There is a whole other argument that um, as we move to more renewables and um, sustainable energy sources, that we're, we're actually have, sitting on a carbon bubble right now because all the billions of dollars that have gone into the um, <clears throat> resource exploration, yes. literally billions of dollars, and now we've found certain resources and reserves, and you can define those in different ways. Um, and but the companies are on the hook for that investment, but the, now they're no longer able to capture those resources at, in, a, in a profitable manner because, you know, oil prices have dropped, right. gas prices have dropped, and 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 they're they're kind of codependent, right? I mean, I'm kind of going on a tangent here, but with fracking, um, gas prices have gone down, which drives oil down, which means on our balance sheet we've yeah. got some risk here, and and and. And then you go back to your CRO, and and it's it's and you, and you know you're thinking about, or or, or your CISO, and you're thinking about your uh, you know protecting your IT infrastructure, and and then somebody says, well, hey, but what about ESG? And and you need to pull. How do you get that data, right? <laughs> For sure. Well, it, it, you're exactly right, Mark. So there is clearly the financial impact of all of these things, but there is also an employee impact. You know, if you look at millennials today and all of this, they're they're joining companies because of their social aspects, exactly. you know, and, and I think I think the, the general corporation, as we've known it in the past, is is changing now. And CEOs, just like me, are out here thinking about, man, diversity isn't just something that I need to do, you know, it, and it's part of the process. But it's absolutely essential for me in recruiting and the quality of the environment uh, within the company. And so I agree with you completely. I, these, this ESG thing, I, this, is a, this, is a, this is not just a trend. This no. is a reality. This is an absolute reality. And it's happening globally. It's not just in the United States. It's not just the political changes here. It's yeah. literally a global aspect. And um, and this diversity thing is a very big uh, factor, and this carbon thing is a factor too, more than just the financial reporting. Yeah, excellent. Well, it's good. That gives me a kind of optimistic uh, outlook uh, here. <laughs> but good to way, hear. If I can give a plug for ESG, here's my prediction. Just okay. like other things that we've done, accounting rules for our financials, yeah. there will become standards around the ESG scores. And companies are going to be able to figure out how they're able to report that how they're able to analyze it and then use it. 
And just like other aspects of GRC, I think this ESG has, has a lot of value to it. We can start providing quantification to understand what those rules will be and how yeah. they can best uh, you know, address it. That's excellent. Well, hey, um, we're c- coming up on our time here. I wonder if you can tell us uh, if any of our listeners wanted to get any more information about Metric Stream or p- possibly you know, find out about the, uh, the, the virtual CISO conference that you, that you host, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, so obviously join, go go into our website, metricstream.com. Um, okay. You can catch me on LinkedIn, of course. So uh, uh, we post this all the time. Um, and by the way, this is a big summit that we're doing uh, early June. So please join us. But we do summits and we do information and, and other aspects that we share all the time as a company. So metricstream.com, uh, look look me up personally, uh, Bruce Dahlgren on LinkedIn. And um yeah, yeah, come join it. This is a this is a exciting time, and we'd love to help you. Well, hey Bruce, I've really enjoyed this conversation. I will put links uh, to your website, and if the, if I can find the link for the uh, the virtual conference, I'll put that in the description of the podcast as well. Gr- great time t- uh, talking with you. Enjoy. I really I think this is the the, the best background I've had uh, in, a, in, a, in a video call in the last well. Two years, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the only thing, will, that, the only thing I, you can beat it is if you were actually on that beach in person. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to end with this last story. So we got the painting before we ever went to Rottnest Island. So before we repatriated and came back, I told my wife, I said, we have to at least go out there and stand. So we actually went and stand, stood right there at that point. But it was after I got the painting. <laughs> that is awesome. Did you get a picture that you can compare? Yeah, I, I got it right <laughs> I, it was quite a surprise when she showed up with it, but uh, thanks for noticing. No, that's I, great. Hey, I've really enjoyed this. It's great to meet you, and hopefully we can do more of these. Likewise. Thanks a lot, Bruce. You take care. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Hello. Welcome to Secure Talk, your trusted source of information on the latest threats, trends, tools, and technology related to cybersecurity.